What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Nate, I own a custom integration company, meaning I help people implement technology into their homes and businesses. What does that mean? We do a lot of smart home products, everything from Sonos and Lutron to control systems, and obviously Ubiquity Networks is what we use for the backbone of all of that. If you're looking for our company to handle your Ubiquity Network, our contact information is in the description below. Any products that you see us use are always linked below. We have an affiliate link for Ubiquity. It helps our channel out a ton if you follow that link. We have a guide for our smart home recommendations for everything you can use in your smart home if you are doing a new construction house, available in the description below as well. Now with all that out of the way, in this video, we're gonna talk about how we utilize Ubiquity in our smart home deployments, our best practices, and what we do to make sure that we have a solid network for everything to work on. We're gonna talk about the products that we utilize frequently from Ubiquity in almost all of our deployments. We're gonna talk about the software that we use. We'll talk about our best practices and how we make sure that things don't fail and that the system is rock solid for years to come. Now, in a smart home, you're gonna use a lot of PoE devices, ideally. So you're gonna you're gonna favor heavily more of a PoE device as opposed to an IoT device, but there's best practices for both. The number one thing that we start with is a PoE switch. We typically use the 24 port switch from Ubiquity, um, but the best thing that you can do is make a list of the products that you plan to install, whether they're cameras, they're wall mounted tablets, they're uh, a mixture of different PoE devices, APs, things like that, go and find what the wattage draw of that individual device is going to be, and then do the math of what your total allotted allowance of power is what you require versus what your switch is capable of handling. We've learned this through experience that it is always better to over estimate how much power you are going to need, assuming that multiple things are going to draw all at the same time, um, so that you're not having to run multiple switches and you are just setting yourself up for success from the beginning. The next thing that we use is we almost always use the UDM Pro or the UDM Pro SE. We do this because we install a lot of Ubiquiti cameras and it is a two birds, one stone product for us and for our clients. We utilize this because we run the Protect app on the UDM Pro and it has a built-in hard drive storage slot. The UDM Pro can take up to a 16 terabyte hard drive, which in our scenario is typically plenty for what we're doing. We very rarely in a residential situation are installing more than 10 cameras for a location, which is plenty for the UDM Pro. As far as the UDM Pro goes, you do have the ability to do 24 HD cameras. You can do 14 uh, 2K cameras, or if you're doing 4K cameras, you have the avail availability to do eight on a UDM Pro. If you're doing a larger camera deployment than that, you would want to change over to the UNVR, uh, which is gonna have a more dedicated hard drive slots, and it's going to allow you to utilize more cameras in your deployment. Keep in mind with the UDM Pro, there are no PoE ports on that. On the UDM Pro SE, you do have some PoE ports. So if you're doing a very small deployment, you could get away with not doing a switch, um, or you could inject your lines for the products that do need PoE. We find it more stable and easier for us to just spec a larger PoE switch than whatever we're going to require for that actual deployment. As far as setup goes, here are some of the best practices that we've found over, the, over time that make sure your system is set up for success. Now, we install a lot of control systems, whether it is Josh AI, Savant, or Control 4. All those products are actively communicating over IP through your network to tell the control system what to do. So things like your Sonos amps, your Lutron hubs, a Philips Hue hub, TVs, audio matrixes, uh, control panels, remotes, all of those things, we go through and make sure that they have a reserved IP address, which is possible through the UDM Pro and through the Unify software that you get with any stack of Ubiquity equipment. What we do is we go and set the DHCP pool to 20 through 255. You could pick any number, it's arbitrary. And then we leave one through 19 for reservations for ourselves. 
This allows us to make sure that anything like a TV, a Sonos amp, any type of product that could actively try and change IP address doesn't have the ability to. Another piece that we always do is we make sure we have a dedicated network for IoT devices. So anything that is not hardwired over CAT and is going to communicate through Wi-Fi, we make sure it is on its own dedicated 2.4 network. Utilize 2.4 because it has a larger range and all of most IoT devices, that is what it's going to work on. Not everything works with a five gigahertz network. Things utilized in a control system, like turning your TV on and off with a scene, it is important to have something like that utilizing a reserved IP address so that it never changes. And anytime you press that scene button, whether you're doing it from a wall panel, you're doing it from a remote, or maybe from the app on your phone, or you're utilizing something like a Lutron switch on your wall, every time you press that button, it always works. As far as the services that we use through Unify, we always use the Unify design service. Uh, this does an incredible job for us on a new construction house of going in, taking the plans and uploading them and allowing us to place uh, the APs in specific locations and heat mapping the property to make sure that we have coverage throughout in both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz networks. Unified Design Software does a great job for someone like me who owns a small business that does this, but it also is incredibly useful on the DIY side of things if you are doing this for yourself. For us, it gives, it gives a great PDF printout that we're able to take all of the heat mapping and supply that to the client. Uh, something like that does show that we do our due diligence of making sure that we're not just randomly placing access points throughout your house and guessing and hoping that your network is going to be solid. We're actually going in and doing the work to make sure that you are set up for the second you move in and for the foreseeable future. Another service that you find in the Unify design software is going to be their rack builder tool. We do a lot of AV equipment on top of our Unify stuff, so we don't typically use uh, the Unify rack or their design tool for the racks. But if you were doing this for yourself, it does give you a great idea of how things are going to fit, making sure that you have enough rack space for what you plan to install and organizing all of it. And then obviously in the smart home world, Cameras are always a popular one in residential and we do install a lot of Unify Protect cameras. All of those cameras do, they're all hardwired back to the switch, which gives us the ability to import that into our control systems as well and give live feeds of all of those cameras. Specifically, we use Josh AI frequently for this. So you can see in the app here, I have full view of all of the cameras in not just the Protect app, but I can go in through our control system app and see everything. We get service calls for people who have large, robust control systems already in their house that maybe we did not install. And it is nine times out of 10, the culprit of things not working is the network backbone, not being able to support all of the different types of products they have in there, whether it is Lutron shades throughout the house, it's Lutron lighting, uh, they have distributed audio, whether it's through Sonos or it's through a, like an audio control, whatever it is, all of those things need to have a network to run successfully on and for the commands to go out and be received. Ubiquity has been outstanding for us. It is the only thing that we install uh, for any of our hardwired networks. And we appreciate the partnership that we have with them because it truly, not only is it just the best in the business, in my opinion, in the world that we live in, which is kind of that prosumer resident, high-end residential installations, RN, the Unify portal, makes our job significantly easier because it reduces the amount of times we have to roll a truck for something that we can go in and remotely see, whether it is port configuration on a switch, whether it's downtime, latency, whatever it is, we have full control over that in a very easy to use dashboard, which allows us to see all of our clients that we actively manage. This for yourself, I can't recommend the Unify dashboard enough. It does take all of the questions and guesswork out of the setup and installation of Unify software and products. Whether it's a huge deployment or a small deployment, we always make sure we're using Ubiquity for it. Um, so whether we're putting in a 48 port switch or we're putting in a eight port light switch, all of it is always Ubiquity for us. A, because it allows us to manage it easier, and B, because the system just works for us. Uh, we've never had issues in comparison to some of the other brands that we have used in the past. So if you're deciding to put 
smart home products in your house. I hope this video is helpful. We're happy to make any type of recommendations. We do offer design services for all sorts of different products. You can find it in the description below. Thank you for checking out our video this week.